Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the most iconic video game characters in history, and as such, people often forget that he has an equally iconic character as his sidekick, Tails. He's gotta go fast too, but his most impressive appendages aren't his feet, they're his tails, duh. How fast do they gotta go in order to let him fly? That's his real name. <laughs> In the Sonic games, Tails is equipped with dual tails, and we see them spin at some speed in order to lift him off the ground. That speed is something we can actually calculate, and the result will tell us if this kind of fox flight is really possible. To find Tails' tailspin velocity, we first need the equation for lift. Now instead of just giving you the equation like a math teacher who's also your high school football coach, I want to show you how to derive the equation for lift, the same one that helicopters use and empower you just using Newton's second law. So let's try it. Force equals mass times acceleration, but acceleration is also equal to a change in velocity over a change in time. But a change in time is also equal to the distance you cover divided by the average velocity you cover that distance with. Now, expand. If you do that, you get the equation for kinetic energy, which is equivalent to work or force acting through some distance. Let's go one step further. If we change mass to the density times the area times the distance over which that area is concerned with, then wait, 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 I'm almost done. Then you get an expression where, wait, where the distances cancel out and then you get the final equation, wait! Now we are left with force acting through some distance on an area that you're concerned about. Okay, you can stop. I was getting anxious. This equation that we just derived using basic math is the very same equation that helicopters use to calculate lift, fox-based or otherwise. How cool is that? The only thing we need to guesstimate here is the coefficient of lift, which is a dimensionless factor used to estimate the differences between angles of attack and wing shape. But we don't want tail lift, we want tail velocity. And so we need to solve for velocity. Rearranging the lift equation will let us do this and find velocity, but we're not done yet. We still need Tails' dimensions. For this, I'm gonna consider the basics, when Tails is hovering. If that's the case, then the lift he needs to generate is equivalent to Tails' mass times gravity, mg, and Tails has a mass of 20 kilograms. I'm also gonna assume that the density of air he is hovering in is normal room temperature air at sea level, which has a density of 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. I'm also gonna assume a lift coefficient somewhere between 0.2 and 1.2, because that is a general range for helicopters. And for the area that Tails' tails sweep out, I'm going to look closely at Tails. It looks like each tail is about equivalent to his height, and when they are spinning, it looks like the radius is half of that. So the radius that I'm gonna be concerned about here is his height, which is 80 centimeters divided by two, which is 40. Now we're ready to calculate, but maybe we need one more thing to get a better idea of what's going on. What if we also solved for revolutions per minute, or RPM? If we did that, then it would tell us where Tails' tails rank among other rotors, like drones or helicopters. To get RPM, we have to take the velocity of Tails' tail and multiply it by 60 seconds to see how much distance that tail will cover around this circle in one minute. And then we divide that value by the circumference of this circle. That will tell us how many revolutions that distance makes in just 60 seconds. Now we can finish the equation, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Using this full and complete expression, all we need to do now is plug in the numbies. Oh, oh, my rings, ow, hidden spikes. Across a range of lift coefficients, in order to hover, Tails' tails would have to spin with at least between 550 to 1350 RPM, which have tail velocities attached to them from 20 three, yep, to 56 meters per second, or between 50 and 130 miles per hour. This is surprisingly plausible. This means that Tails' tails RPM falls between drone RPMs 
in the thousands, yep, and helicopter RPMs in the hundreds, yes. Again, this makes total sense. Tails' tail RPM is a lot slower than a drone's because it pushes on a lot more area, but it's a lot faster than a helicopter's because it has to compensate for not pushing on all of the area of air that a helicopter does. Except this can't be the final value because we also see Tails lift Sonic, meaning that he needs to be able to at least provide lift enough for both. Yep, I know, I know, not fast enough, geez. All we need to add for our equation to make this work is Sonic's mass, which is 35 kilograms. So let's add that back into our equation. I know, I'm, I know, I'm going super Sonic! <laughs> Math time. These are the same numbies. All we did was add in Sonic's mass. And now we will get the same full range of values. Hidden spikes. Okay, I'm good. Given our final equation, Tails' tails would have to spin with an RPM at least from 900 to 2200 RPM, which have tail velocities attached to them somewhere between 38 and 94 meters per second, or 85 to 210 miles per hour. That's how he flies! Again, these are plausible speeds, but only if we give the fox the benefit of the doubt. As you can see in this perfect rendering and in this in-game footage, it certainly looks like Tails' tails are directly above him, which doesn't seem like a problem until you realize that all the air that the tails are pushing down would, yes, provide a lift, but then directly push on Tails' body, canceling out or making it very, very hard for Tails to fly in the first place. So, uh, giving him the benefit of the doubt, let's just assume all of the air is being pushed out to the side and not right onto his body. So, how fast do Tails' tails gotta go in order to let him do what we see him do in the video games? Well, assuming that his tails could actually spin like that in the first place, they wouldn't have to go any faster than a helicopter's blades and slower than a drone's, which makes total sense. If he was any heavier, then this may not work, but he's right there in the butter zone one. And you know what's really cool is that to go as fast as Sonic, Tails' tails don't have to move any faster than Sonic's feet. Because science, hey! All my little animal friends are here. Oh, they're all here with me. Let's, let's go spread the word of pointless calculation. Why don't, why don't Tails' tails twist when they spin? If, if they're spinning like this, they have to, they have to complete a full rotation, right? So they would twist up unless he had like a joint in his, like where our coccyx would be, like our tailbone, where it was like a plug bone that could rotate muscle-wise inside of his, pelvis to, he's gross. <laughs> he's a mutant, poor boy. Oh, poor little foxy boy. Thank you so much for watching, Caitlin. I really mean that. If you want even more weird stuff from me, you can check out me and my colleague Dan Casey's new show, The Squatch, where we get very silly about a very serious man. And if you want something a little bit more premium, ooh, go to projectalpha.com and check out my show, The Space Program. That's it.